This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting from Konethos, Greece. We've returned to Greece for the fourth time in the last three years in order to continue our coverage of the Greek economic crisis. This year, we're examining the current performance of the Greek economy and suggestions emerging from the Greek government uh, that Greece has begun to emerge from the economic crisis. And uh, we're privileged to be joined today by Professor John Milios. Uh, professor Milios is a social scientist and a Marxian economic scholar. Uh, he is a professor of political economy and the history of economic thought at the National Technical University of Athens. He's the author of several scholarly books and the director of the Quarterly Journal of Economic Theory uh, Thesis, Thesis. And he was the chief economic advisor of Syriza, uh, the government of Syriza until March 2015. Thank you so the much for joining us. The party of Syriza. The party of Syriza. <laughs> okay. Thank you for correcting me. And uh, it's good to be with you today. I'm so, very glad to be with you. So I'd like to start, uh, Professor Milios, by talking to you about uh, the current uh, macroeconomic performance of Greece uh, for the last two quarters for which there are uh, statistics available. Greece has experienced uh, economic growth, albeit weak economic growth. Uh, I suppose that in the circumstances of the economic crisis where Greece has seen a crushing decline in its uh, GDP, any economic growth uh, is relatively positive. And we're starting to hear, as I mentioned in the introduction, suggestions from the government that these are signs that Greece has begun to emerge from the economic crisis. How, how would you respond to those suggestions? Well, um, talking in general, I would say that there are no permanent crises. And uh, allow me to tell you that this is a quotation uh, by Karl Marx. There are no uh, permanent crises. So it's, um, it's true that uh, the crisis uh, is somehow uh, beyond the critical point, but we have to discuss what this means for the majority of the people and what we mean if we say that we have some positive signs of growth. Uh, the overall result, the average, is this positive index, for example, of the GDP growth, but we are coming out of the crisis with a more polarized society, with uh, an open gap between the rich and the poor, with uh, a continuing uh, humanitarian crisis for European uh, standards, of course. The, we do not have uh, people of, uh, uh, who starve, but we have people who are unemployed, we have a higher rate of unemployment, and we have a lot of people who, although they work, they work in very precarious conditions, and what they gain from their work uh, does not suffice for them to, to um, uh, live properly, and they have to be supported by institutions, or by the family, or by friends, and so on. So, Greece is a different society, is an unequal society, and we have the elites, that is the oligarchy, which, which has uh, strengthened its position very much through the crisis. Because I have to tell you that um, uh, austerity, which was the enemy of Syriza, that uh, the main slogan of Syriza was to end austerity, is not a false policy for the oligarchy because uh, what is the living standard of the majority of the people of the population is the cost of these people and during the crisis they are very anxious to lower all costs and uh, labor cost comes first so the crisis uh, of Greek capitalism is coming to an end but the crisis of the majority of the people is deteriorating and this is a problem and this is also something that uh, the Greek left has to deal with. And I want to talk to you specifically about the unemployment rate. In, in July 2013, I believe it was in the range of 28 percent. Astonishing, you know, this is the uh, actually above the level of unemployment that existed during the United States uh, in the Great Depression, I believe. Now it's down to 21 percent, still the highest in the Eurozone by a significant margin. Uh, but it's come down 25% from July 2013. Mm -hmm. That too is a, a statistic which the current government uh, invokes to suggest that they're making progress. 
The other day, Yanis Varoufakis said, well, that's uh, really creating a false impression because this is largely attributable to the departure of unemployed youths from Greece. Uh, what do you think uh, accounts for this drop in unemployment? Do you think that this uh, is indicative of an improvement in the circumstances of the ordinary Greek citizen? Uh, well, uh, some sectors of the economy are expanding. Uh, tourism uh, succeeded a very high growth rate, so it's uh, something that um, should be expected that the rate of unemployment uh, would uh, decrease. However, we have another structure of employment and this uh, statistical reduction of unemployment is to a large extent due to the fact that uh, uh, part-time employment has, uh, has risen very much and also uh, we have uh, other forms of precarious employment for example uh, the lending of uh, um, uh, employees for some hours a week from one company to another and so on so we have a very different labor market as we had compared to that that uh, before the crisis and uh, the, 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 the end effect of it is to uh, produce uh, statistical results which show a reduction of unemployment. I have also to tell you that we have an, a, a very um, uh, ex extensive, a very big uh, black market. That is people who are being employed as part-timers for two or three hours a day and they actually work for seven or even uh, ten hours without being paid over, uh, o over uh, work and so on. Uh, and so it's a jungle, the labor market right now. And we have to be critical of the final statistical uh, uh, outcome that uh, uh, unemployment is uh, going down. Of course it is going down but under conditions which are very unfavorable for ordinary wage earners. And let's talk about the oligarchy. You mentioned the oligarchy at the outset. Uh, this was a major plank of the Syriza platform in 2014 uh, in the months leading up to its, uh, its first uh, uh, government. And uh, even the, the language coming out of some members of Syriza was quite uh, aggressive, they were saying they were going to crush the oligarchy. Since uh, Syriza now has had, the Syriza government has now had nearly three years in power, in your opinion, have they taken any meaningful measures to constrain the power of the oligarchy? Not at all, not at all. I, I, I can also tell you that before the elections, since um, the summer of uh, uh, 2014, the language of, of Syriza had changed. Uh, instead of talking about crushing the oligarchy or uh, re redistributing power and wealth to the benefit of the social majority, they started uh, talking about growth in general. And, uh, and part of the growth is the profits of the oligarchy. Uh, I can tell you at this point that one of the most crucial slogans of Syriza, that is uh, a, a very important chapter in Syriza's program, was to raise the minimum wage from uh, 583 euros a month to 751 euros, as it was before the crisis. That was part of the Thessaloniki platform. Yes, but and also before the Thessaloniki, long before the Thessaloniki, we were talking about the generation of uh, 750. Uh, meaning that even 750 is a very low wage for uh, a person who had just finished university or other studies and is entering the labor market. And of course, uh, we heard the prime minister after the election of January uh, 2015 talk about a, a long-lasting process which was going to involve the ILO to see how it could be uh, achieved gradually 
to raise the minimum wage from 580 to 750 as if it was a very difficult problem to do. Um, it's indicative of the fact that uh, during the last month or the, or the last year before the election, uh, Syriza was shifting from a party wanting to represent the, the, the interests of the working class to an ordinary a progressive party, and let's say a traditional social democratic party, who speaks about the common interests of the oligarchy and the wage earners and everyone as Greeks against uh, the, the Germans or the European Union or I don't know who, uh, who comes from abroad and so all together we will see what is uh, best and of course what uh, in the end is best is the interest of the uh, entrepreneurial classes and first of all of the big capital, the oligarchy. Uh, you know, the timing of your departure uh, as chief economic advisor to the Cities of Party is interesting. It was in March of 2015, but uh, at least, uh, 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 you know, conventionally speaking, people view the capitulation as having happened in July after the referendum, and in fact, that's when the finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis, resigned. I'm, if I might ask, what prompted uh, you to cease to play that role in March of 2015? From your perspective, was, there, was that something that you decided to do because you saw the writing on the wall, you knew where things were heading, and you couldn't associate yourself with it anymore? Yes, I knew what was going to happen, or um, approximately what was uh, going to happen before the elections. That's why I, I wasn't a candidate and I refused uh, the offers of the Prime Minister to choose between two um, uh, min min ministerial offices. The Prime Minister, the day after the elections, offered me two uh, ministers to choose w which one I prefer, and I refused. I also refused to be a, an MP, a member of the Parliament. Which ministries were those? Uh, the Minister of Navigation and of Tourism. Okay. And, uh, but uh, I, I stayed a member of Syriza and I tried to do my best in order to show to my comrades and to leftist people, to the voters of Syriza, to the Greek society, that uh, th uh, there should be a different course and that uh, things were not going very well. However, I regarded the agreement of the 20th of uh, February, signed by Rivarufakis, uh, a memorandum or the, the memorandum, because they signed an agreement to comply with everything that was in the European program uh, that, uh, of, the, for, of the former go governments without taking any money, uh, having the European institutions, that is the Troika, uh, owing money, uh, several billion of uh, euros to the Greek government, and they continued to pay money to the institutions, to the Troika, although the, the whole plan was that you receive the money to the Troika to give it back to the institutions to, to which you owe, that is the ECB and the IMF. So they, they didn't receive the money, but they were still paying by taking everything uh, that was available in universities, in the hospitals, in the municipalities and so on. So this was not a, a, a policy uh, that uh, was able to achieve anything. It was clear to me after the 20th of uh, February that they were going to, f to sign the final uh, memorandum because they didn't have any weapons anymore. So what, what do you think precipitated and I'm, I appreciate, I may be asking you to speculate here, uh, but uh, what do you think precipitated the resignation of uh, Minister Varoufakis? If in effect the government had already signed on to the program under his tenure, uh, what was the whole point of resigning after the referendum? 
Um, I'm not sure that I can answer this question because um, the policies of Varoufakis were very volatile. Uh, on the one hand, he was making extreme declarations in the direction that uh, during the crisis there are no class differences and we are all together uh, to save the country and so on. On the other hand, he was suggesting that um, something different should be made as regards the debt obligations of the country. So I cannot answer uh, for sure. I, I, I can suggest that he had a hope that um, a change, of course, could have happened in the last minute. For example, there were many people, not only him, who hoped that after the referendum, which was a major historical ev event for this country, uh, Tsipras and the government would stop negotiating, uh, negotiating and uh, uh, would say that we'd start from the beginning because we have uh, the... Um, um, the mandate of the of the big majority of the Greek people that we shall change course. However, before that, they have uh, produced a, a, a text, a paper of 47 pages, the so called the so called 47 pages uh, draft, uh, which was the propositions of the Greek government to the institutions to the Troika. And if uh, someone uh, read this document very carefully, um, he or she would um, come to the conclusion that uh, these Greek propositions were not very differ uh, different from the final result. So what I suggest is that the government hoped that the, uh, the result of the referendum would be um, more beneficial for them, that is something like 50-50, so as to say that although we came to power with 36 or 37 percent, now we are uh, 50 percent, but uh, the society is divided, there is no clear uh, result, so we have to follow the course that we have already found. This is my suggestion why the whole thing uh, happened the way it happened. Because we saw the next day Tsipras uh, being ready to um, conclude the final uh, agreement with uh, Troika and also before that to make an agreement with the opposition parties, that is the Conservatives and the Neoliberal uh, Centrum so that all together accept the new uh, agreement. So maybe everything was uh, uh, already prepared long before, that is months before the final agreement. And um, uh, the way everything happened uh, was uh, um, uh, scheduled as to convince people that uh, a big fight is uh, taking place and that uh, uh, Greece uh, 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 resists and that Athens is the new Stalingrad or I don't know <laughs> what and I am not uh, saying that uh, so as a new idea this is how uh, Mason uh, uh, the well-known British uh, uh, journalist uh, started uh, a speech in Athens, hello new Stalingrad. <coughs> okay, so, uh, maybe this was also everything a, a communication issue. So I'd like to just uh, ask you to prognosticate about the future based upon everything you've seen and heard. What do you think will ultimately happen with this uh, radically unsustainable debt that Greece has uh, assumed? You know, the, the, at the time of the capitulation, uh, one could certainly call it that, in July of 2015, one of the things that members of the government were saying was, well, we have this commitment for debt relief. Mm -hmm. We're going to get debt relief, maybe not tomorrow, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. And here we are now, in approaching the end of 2017, and there has not been any meaningful 
debt relief measures adopted. Do you think ultimately that there's going to be a negotiated solution to the unsustainable debt, or do you think Greece is simply going to have to default? No, no. Uh, the, uh, nobody will allow a default in the Eurozone. That was the, um, uh, the actual weapon that the government had. If the government stopped paying uh, tranches to the Troika after the January 2015 election, then uh, everything could, uh, uh, could have happened differently. Uh, because it's impossible for the ECB to allow a default in the euro area and also um, a, a, an exit from the euro area would uh, mean the final end of the euro area because the uh, Italian or the Spanish interest rates are going to, to climb to unprecedented heights and this is going to um, uh, make everything explode. So I think that uh, before the, um, the debt becomes a, a real problem, because now uh, 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 the debt is not a problem as it is going to be in, in a two years time, when Greece should have to pay enormous interest rates and also uh, repayments of all debt. And uh, now Greece does not pay such amounts of money. Before that time comes, they, uh, there is going to be a restructuring of the debt in a way that the debt will continue to be a, 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 a means imposing austerity policies. Now, that is, the, they are not going to, we are not going to have any radical solution of the debt problem, but they are going to postpone conditionally the date of repayment so that Greece should have to follow, even after the program has finished, should have to follow the same austerity policies in order to have the agreement go on that is the postponement of uh, the postponement of uh, of payments so the debt is going to be there but it's going to be restructured in a way so that uh, no default takes place well we'll certainly be watching closely to see if your prognostication is is yes. correct professor Mijos, and we thank yes. you very much for joining us today. i thank you also very much and this has been dimitri lascaris for the real news from corinthos greece Thank mm -hmm. you.